In the early hours of the morning in 1998, a new post appeared in a Google group dedicated to the fighting game community. Will Moses was the user, and the post reads, Well, all of the KOF games take a while to load, but probably the best one so far would have to be 97. But actually, I like 96 better, as it had Keith Howard, Mr. Big, and Krauser. Halad. This harmless post answering a question about which King of Fighters game was best caused you to be here today watching this video. Welcome to the birthplace of the Vortex. <laughs> the truth, like I always do. Twitch TV looks for streamers who are going to constantly be begging for money. Okay, I need subs, send me donations and subs. Will Moses' second post ever was him calling East Coast Marvel vs. Capcom player Jason Viscant Snyder out for an upcoming tournament, but we'll get back to this one a little bit later. The FGC was divided into areas of competition and a natural East Coast vs. West Coast rivalry was born thanks to online forums and chat rooms full of different personalities from tournament runners, players talking strategy, and most importantly in this story, shit talkers. Well, Moses was a shit talker, and he loved to chime in with his hot takes, call outs, and eventually apologies. Like this one to West Coast FGC player, Alex Valle. Valle was a top player at the time who fell just short of a comeback as the first American player to play against Daigo the Beast Umahara, a Japanese fighting game player who was a top touted talent in the scene of that time. まあ、簡単に もう後がない日本チャンピオン。なんとか1個を返す梅原君。
そして一試合取り返す日本チャンピオン梅原君が世界一の座に輝いた<音楽>そして、ボン・モーセス continued this post with a rant about Marvel vs. Capcom and how it was superior, in his opinion, to Street Fighter Alpha 3. Post faded with the start of a new millennium. Came a new website for the FGC to talk about their passion. Shoryuken.com was born in February 2000. Soon after that date, a user named Punisher appeared and started rubbing people the wrong way with complaints about controls, game bugs, blaming others for his own problems, as well as run ins with notable. Players in the community, such as Justin Wong, Jaha, Mike Watson, and others in the forum, led to this East Coast player, Philip Burnell, better known as Dark Side Phil or DSP for short, to embrace a new moniker. The King of Hate was now born. During the early 2000s, DSP would attend college as well as. Spend some money to travel the country, going to fighting game tournaments and testing his medal against other players. This led him to appear at Evo 2002, where he was confronted by Jaha for years of shit talking on the forums in person. In a in podcast interview from 2015, Jaha recalls the situation. <laughs> All right, so before we get into the story, yes, you know,、um, let me see. So, this, this does go a while back, of course. And,、um, you know, Phil is either going to do one or two things.、Uh, the reason we fucking had to run him down, and this happened fucking twice, is because he just, the guy likes to talk a lot of shit、mm-hmm. on the internet. And the fucking beauty of the fighting game community is that. You know, you can hide behind a fucking screen and talk shit just like how we have these internet trolls. But with Street Fighter, you have to show up physically to the fucking tournament. Exactly. All right. So, you know, everybody comes from fucking different places, different backgrounds. You know, mine's was a little rougher. And I come from a place where, like, hey, you fucking talk shit. You know, you're going to have to fucking back it up when you get face to face or, you, you know, whatnot. You know, so a little bit of a different era. So I guess it starts in.、Uh, 2002. Okay. It was Evo, and this is before they even started going to Vegas. They were at UCLA that year, and he started like some fucking hate website or something like that. It was like his first website, and、uh, you know, the, the forum for the chat was sureyoucan.com, SRK. Yes, it was UCLA loophole, and、uh, it was that year, and Let me see. It was like he was talking a bunch of shit against like the, the top Marvel players. So Shady K was one of them. And、uh, Shady K didn't like him too much because he would like run his mouth so much. I mean, this guy would make posts that were like a mile long or whatnot. So we had them fucking play a money match. And it, I think it was like first to 10 for、uh, like 100 bucks. Or it was first to five. Yeah, I think it was like first to 10 for 100 bucks. And.、Uh, They played the first game and it was on a big screen, and Shady K won the first game. Then, after that, it was one of the Cannon Brothers.、Uh, yeah, it might have been $200 for 10 games, but I know it was increments of $10 because <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. So, he lost the first game, and then after that, one of the Cannon Brothers was like, dude, we're behind schedule. We can't fucking do this. And,、um, you know, they, they just cut it off and it ended.、Mm-hmm. So, Uh, when DSP was leaving with like him and a couple of his boys, it was、uh, that's when it was time to like roll up on him. We followed him outside and we caught him outside. And I'm there with my freaking JVC kaboom box and shit because that's how I rolled <laughs> and stuff. And I was with a couple of my fucking boys. 
and uh, they were getting up in like, you know, DSP's fucking friends' faces too, just to fucking make sure none of them got crazy. But they were all fucking shitting bricks. Okay. And uh, and then to be honest, there's another guy there. I don't know if you guys ever heard of his name's Desmond Pinkney. He's a executioner. He was a Marvel two player. I remember him being there. One of his friends was fucking videotaping this. Too bad it fucking never got out anywhere. Maybe he freaking recorded a sex tape over it or some family vacation, but it never hit the internet. And uh, fucking he was videotaping it and I'm fucking getting up in his face asking him why the fuck he's talking shit and what the fuck's his problem and he's fucking just you know just fucking cowering and all fucking scared and him and his friends are trying to fucking leave and we're not letting them and then you know I pretty much to make a long story short I pretty much was fucking told him hey you fucking lost one match you're gonna fucking pay him fucking ten dollars mm-hmm. or fucking twenty dollars because that's the percentage of fucking the matches that uh he would have fucking lost, which, <laughs> and fucking, you know, just scared fucking him shitless until he fucking, you know, he paid the fucking like ten dollars or whatever to fucking shave him. Then we let him fucking leave, and then he fucking got the fuck out of there with the quickness. You know, he just, he just turns fucking white, and it's funny because he just like talks so much shit on the internet, but when you run into him in fucking person, he's just fucking, you know, turns white as a ghost. Right, and. Um, yeah, so uh, people thought that was pretty fucking funny because, you know, you got to play out a whole fucking set before you pay the full amount, you know, but he lost one game, so I fucking demanded he paid a fraction of, of what he lost, which is bullshit, but whatever, <laughs> I guess fucking had him fucking uh, pretty shook. The increasing hostility against DSP on SRK.com led Phil to create his very first website, TopHaters.com. Sound good? <laughs> 